a lovely facade for a new housing development in California. But behind this waterfall lies a terrible truth, one that Washington and Wall Street want to keep as their dirty secret. One million families every year have their homes repossessed because they can't afford to keep up the mortgages. In the richest nation on earth, people are living in tents in cities like this one, Riverside in California. Along the riverbanks, in caves dug into the side of rivers. This is supposed to be the superpower, the arch example of the market economy in action, and yet families can't keep roofs over their heads. The water tower on the top of a barren hill is where dozens of families have been sent to live because they can't afford the high prices of land within the city of Riverside. If we pan around we see that this vacant site is within a five minute walking distance of a railway. The railway that would take people, the commuters, into Los Angeles where they would work. This land stands idle now. The land specular expecting to make huge capital gains sometime in the future. Meanwhile, people driven to develop lands on the barren hillside. There is no mystery as to why families are having their homes foreclosed. The subprime mortgage is the term that is used to symbolize the fact that the financial system went into crisis in 2008. But what caused the bankers to recklessly lend money to people who couldn't afford it? It was the pursuit of the unearned gains from land. Land is the one asset that delivers the largest, apparently safest, capital gain to speculators. But historically we know that it's not the safest asset. Time and again there is a property boom and then a big bust. And the people who pay the price are the families whose homes are repossessed. That instability is driven by the pursuit of capital gains from land. Well, if that's the reason, then surely that is where policy should be focused. Not talking about re-regulating the bankers, greedy bankers and their bonuses, all of which, yes, happened. Yes, there were crooks, there were scams, a lot of money was made, but none of that would have been possible if the financial system was structured so as to reward the people who go to work, who add value to the economy who produce goods and services that they can sell to the consumers. Our tax system penalizes those people. Instead, what we do is reward the pursuit of capital gains from land. It's not the buildings that make the real money, the big bucks for the developers. It's the land underneath those buildings, the capital gains. And the tax system privileges people who speculate in land, hoarding it for not just years, but decades, making towns sprawl. This is an example of the huge waste of capital, scarce capital that could be used in other ways. Roads that lead to nowhere, to barren land that was supposed to be developed by the speculators who wanted to make the financial killing. Instead, having installed the infrastructure, the market went belly up. Now these uh, plots will remain vacant for years if not decades but in the meantime the money that was invested in highways such as this one could have been used for schools and hospitals not more than a mile away from here there's a school brand new empty it will not now be used because the local government has run out of money it can't afford to pay for the teachers to staff the school so having invested in that school the building an olympic-sized swimming pool children will not be educated in that institution because the property tax here in America is not now generating enough revenue to pay for the staff, the school books and the tuition that the children of America badly need. Now if Washington and Wall Street was honest about it they would say that that's what was driving the current financial crisis. Some people would say that it was criminal 
that houses like this should be standing vacant. Billions of dollars of scarce capital has been locked up in the construction of very good dwellings which families desperately need. But this is all because of an ideology that can be crystallized in the terms of the efficient market hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, which in general economists subscribe to before the boom that then went crash, according to this hypothesis, the market was efficient. People would do the rational thing. There would be no full-scale uh, foreclosure of homes because people wouldn't get into debt that they couldn't afford to pay. Well, we now know that this efficient market is extremely inefficient. But actually, it's not the market that's at fault. The fault really lies with government. Government allows this kind of thing to happen. How can we blame government? Well, they have the policy tools, the power to do something about it. They can restructure the tax incentives so that they encourage people who create jobs, the entrepreneurs and the people who are willing to work to make a living, and they can invite the owners of land like this to pay for the services that they receive from the community if the landowners who want to use those services paid the full value for them in the way that we do when we go into a supermarket and expect to collect goods off the shelves we don't walk out of those shops expecting someone else to subsidize us do we why is it that landowners expect to be subsidized by a property tax that is actually perverse. Government has the power to do something about that and it refuses to do so. It thinks it's pandering to the homeowner, but the homeowner is suffering as much as anybody else. It's about time we sent a message to Washington, to Westminster, to Brussels, to all politicians that they will be held accountable for failing to introduce a pricing mechanism that serves both the private sector, the people who produce the wealth, and the public sector, the sector that delivers services to the community. A million families have their homes foreclosed every year here in the United States. When is Washington and Wall Street going to tell the truth? 